My name is Sarah Cochran and it is my uh, enormous pleasure to welcome you to the church today. We are incredibly delighted, excited and grateful to have Jane Martin with us. And we are all interested and excited to hear about her varied career. Jane is a multidisciplinary artist working in painting, photography and filmmaking. Um, her, obviously her practice is very influenced by spirituality and poetry. Um, I have no doubt we will hear more about this today. Um, her training uh, took place for studio arts at SUNY um, and for filmmaking in NYU. Um, she is a long time residence here in the East End, having moved here in 2004. However, she is um, a Manhattanite by birth. Um, and perhaps uh, Francaise by um, Esprit and Love, um, at least of the food if nothing else. Um, and it has just been an enormous joy to have her three photographs with us for the last few months as part of our exhibition, uh, Clear Out to Sea. Um, this was a wonderful exhibition that um, I had the privilege to work on with Eric Fischel. It includes the work, obviously, of Jane Martin, Thomas Joshua Cooper upstairs, and Sally Gal, who has been all the three artists in dialogue, thinking about um, sort of the way abstraction and realism um, come together and uh, mix and converse. So with that, I would just like to thank Jane for being with us again today. I would like to thank you. Um, and as always, we'll have time for questions afterwards. So, Jane, thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Well, a great crowd and a lot of friends and, and friendly faces, so thank you for coming. Um, I want to thank uh, Eric Fischel for his uh, lovely email inviting me to exhibit um, in this exhibition. And, of course, to April and Eric for creating this beautiful space um, that's uh, just so important for the community. Um, and to Sarah Cochran for her support and the whole team here has been really wonderful. So um, thanks to them. So I uh, was encouraged by Eric and April to do something out of the box and I hope they don't regret it. <laughs> The curious eye speaks to the, the breadth of my work, as I work in, as Sarah introduced me, uh, many different mediums, um, I think five or six and counting. So there's lots to show. I'm going to try to keep it to 35 minutes. There's that uh, wonderful phrase, less is more, which I am not going, I'm going to totally ignore. <laughs> um, and uh, what else? Um, oh yeah, just. You know, I never had the opportunity to show highlights from my life's work. And um, that's what I intend to do today, minus a few decades and several things in between. But uh, I hope you enjoy it. And uh, here we go, I'm new to PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. So um, I'm nourished by new experiences and places. I have a case of aesthetic and geographical wanderlust. <laughs> These are the places I've lived. Primarily uh, 14 years in France, uh, Copenhagen, and Australia. And these are a lot of the places I've traveled to. Travel is very important for part of my work. I love to be immersed in another culture, their language, their visual landscape. As for my background, I studied fine art and photography in college, but my serious studies began, began in my junior year in a study abroad program in France, when France serves as the model, it says. And we were 12 students. We worked all year from the model or the still life in charcoal on one size paper, which was a, a great discipline. Um, we went through the various isms Impressionism, Cubism, Bovism, Constructivism. Yeah, that's me, with the red arrow and the long dark hair. <laughs> so the teacher was a form former student of an assistant to Hans Hoffmann, whose work was a precursor to abstract expressionism. And um, so I continued, that's where it all began. I continued to draw and paint 
and was also a photographer from the very beginning, black and white film photographer. Um, living in France, where that was actually shot in Central America, but anyway, <laughs> because I, I went back to France after graduating, and I was exposed to European cinema, and I um, saw film as this amazing art form, which somehow um, was really for the first time for me that uh, I recognized that. So after six years in France, I returned to New York, went to NYU to study film, and subsequently um, worked with the likes of Al Pacino and Gregory Colbert. And Colbert asked me to go to Paris to shoot and edit a film on AIDS, and um, I ended up staying in Paris for eight years. So that once again, it was the coffee, I think. <laughs> um, and I worked in film as a cinematographer, as an editor, um, as a production manager, as well as um, director. And, and then it became time for me to make my own documentary. So we're jumping ahead to the uh, early 90s. Sort of, you know, at that time I just made this little watercolor and went to the photocopy store in Paris and that's how we did publicity. Different time. So shooting in Manhattan and editing in Paris, I made um, this film um, on the ubiquitous water tanks which are all over New York City. I'm sure many of you are familiar with them. I was just, I always loved them. I was always fascinated by them. And the film was broadcast prime time on PBS and other networks and eventually seen by like one and a half million people. And people really remembered the film even 10, 12 years later. Um, it was reacquired and uh, rebroadcast. Shot in 16. Um, so I'm just going to show you a short clip. The, the beginning of the film shows the destruction of a water tank. What was curious is during the shooting of it, people would come up to me and say, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, what, what are you shooting up in the sky? And I was surprised at how few New Yorkers actually knew where the water supply came from or knew anything about these little wooden towers. Um, so I used that as the audio track. So the film, um, it was all their musings and they were sometimes accurate, mostly inaccurate. And I told the story visually, you know, like a painting. Tear all the water towers down? Why tear it down? Why? We don't know the purpose of it. I mean, that might be you know, something that's saving somebody's life, you know what I'm saying? In some kind of way, some kind of form, you know? So why would we just say tear it down? If they be there, they stay there. About, is about changing consciousness and on some level and you know as I said people really remember the film um, and I think it brought a whole level of recognition to um, this less level above street level. I was thinking of Sally's presentation last weekend and the idea of looking up and bringing consciousness to something that's part of our, our daily lives. So after 12 years in film and television, the film and television industry in, in New York and Paris, 
I moved back to New York City, got a studio on the Lower East Side, and took up painting again after the incredible challenges of filmmaking. I decided I needed to be creative on a more of a daily basis. So here I am working on a triptych, and we have the influence of my earlier studies, uh, working in charcoal and, and from the model. I'm showing this work um, also in charcoal, as it was the first painting that was shown in the Hamptons by Arlene Bouget on Newtown Lane. If you remember her gallery there. So the 62 by 56 and called Here I Am. My five-year-old nephew came for a studio visit and he, he exclaimed, it's a plum, it's a swan, it's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought there's the, the wisdom of children. This painting is called Merge, 60 by 66. I'm primarily an abstract painter, but you know there's often a point of departure in nature, some kind of reference. At other times, it's just pure abstraction. So I'm just going to show you a smattering of paintings from my Lower East Side studio in the 90s. It's tic-tac-toe. <laughs> For some reason, I've used X's and O's in my work, and they've sort of come back even recently. Um, don't really know why. I did. I did spend a whole month. Uh, deciding if I could leave that one panel white. This is called Shroud. You see a, a faint X. This is called Partout et Nulle Part, which is everywhere and nowhere. And this one is somehow India. It's a 42 by 48. I spent a lot of time in um, Buddhist circles in the city from 2000 to 2003, and India, India was on my mind, but I've, I've never been there. This one's called Centreville, vous êtes ici. Um, those are the words when you're walking around Paris, they have big maps, and they have a circle of where you're located, and vous êtes ici, indicating where you are. That's a um, 60 by, 66 by 60. This one is somehow Menorca. It was painted after a trip to Menorca, Spain. And I've always loved the square because it takes away certain decisions like verticality or horizontality. Just makes it simple. It's got good feng shui. And I use a lot of layering in my paintings. This one I actually started with a grid and then eventually covered over most of it. This one's called Atmospheric Conditions. And at this point, I was already spending significant time in the Hamptons. And I see, I think you see the change in color and the entrance of the horizontal line. In 2004, I left New York City, and I had the tremendous luck to find a home and studio in Springs. It's located on the former Ward Bennett estate. There was also an artist who worked in several different mediums. And it's a 26-acre cedar forest that I basically had to myself since that time. I began by painting there, but I got mesmerized by I mean, the, the studio is all three walls of glass, which is totally impractical, and I had to sort of cover them up during time. But I kept moving out to the cedar forest, and one day I just said, well, I have to do something with that. And um, two or three weeks later, it was like, well, I'm going to put a, I'm going to put female nude out there. And then eventually it's like, well, then I've got to add fog. So it sort of went on. This is how I work. It's very organic. I've never been a photographer who is staged things, but in New York I was doing an experiment, I was videotaping a, a model, to, I was trying to get a certain gesture for a painting, so I thought, well, I'll just videotape it, and then I printed it out, I chose what I needed, and I printed it out in my little black and white laser printer, and I thought, oh my god, it's beautiful. So that's how video stills began, it was kind of an accident and eventually mounted them on wood panels and covered them with resin. So this is called Shelter Sky. And I refer to this whole series, this was shot right outside my studio. I refer to this series as, as Chaos Control. 
because of course on one level it's staged, but um, it's extremely chaotic because we have the female nude running around and then there's the fog with the fog machine which is pretty heavy and I'm trying to hold that and direct it and the wind's coming and I'm trying to shoot at the same time. So it's, it's totally chaotic, um, but then I get downloaded to my computer and I'm literally going through frame by frame by frame, you know, to find that one thirtieth of a second. And I call that the moment between moments. So it took a tremendous amount of work in Photoshop to make them printable on, on you know, archival paper. And I began digital printing with Jonathan Morse and Sag Harper. And I learned a lot from him, but after I finished paying off his mortgage, I decided to buy my own printer. <laughs> um, and uh, I've been printing ever since with that. Um, so yeah, I've developed this whole process. It took years to do it on a, on a large scale, of mounting them on wood panels and coating them with resin. These are often taken for paintings. Um, this one's called Silent Breath. So we see, you know, my interest in the power and the mystery and the sensuality of the female form. This piece at 42 by 56 was acquired by the uh, Parish Museum. And sort of the transformation of these beautiful but rather ordinary trees with fog. Um, and I love the ambiguity of the pose. Is she entering the landscape or is she stepping back? And so therefore the title, uh, Closer, Far Away. So this was my solo show at Guild Hall. I'm showing you a few photos from, just gives you an idea of the actual scale of the pieces. This is a digital C print called Reckoning. The others are video still coated with resin. So you get a better idea of how they looked. Um, one on the left is called Evidence of Ecstasy. You can see the gesture of the hand, sort of the movement in video. It's reckoning and no clear light, no clear shadow. These were shot on North Haven. Inward appearances. We're going to come back to that. Those two triptychs are about 12 feet wide. And then we also have the introduction of water as, um, well, I'm affected by my surroundings. That's a detail from the triptych. And these three are sea change, undulate, and whisper, roar, gush. This is an excerpt from a video installation that was done for the exhibit. It's called Revealed, and it tied together the themes of what I've been working with, the female form, water and fog. And um, the, the square format created another level of abstraction.
So this is how art gets made. <laughs> that was not shot in a shower. <laughs> I created this booth, water streaming down. That's the fog machine on the ladder. And uh, a little wet project. So it's, it's staged, but I never actually know what's going to happen. You know, big element of chance, and I'm just kind of working on instinct and, and feeling. So pure fog. Of course, it's another form of water. And this series was called Breath and Desire. And I'm always trying to bring things to another level of abstraction, which I don't know, somehow the diptych kind of worked for me. So, continuing in the water theme, this is called Liquid Veil. It's covered with water droplets. And the next couple of photos were taken shooting straight down. And I thought I'd touch on uh, disappointment for the artist. This shot was taken at Laos Point in Springs. And I went back at the time of the year when the fishnets are laid out in September. And I went back for two, three years, you know, trying to um, get another photo that reached this level of abstraction, but it just didn't work. So it's just disappointing not to get a series out of something, but I, it still sort of fits into my body of work. And the same for the following two images. These are called Down Under for two reasons. One is that they were shot in Australia, and the other being, once again, shooting straight down. This, was, this is a tea tree lake. I had to hike down the ocean in Australia and into this tea tree lake, which was an Aboriginal birthing ground. And the water has several different layers. Color begins at yellow, goes to orange red and deep black. Now, I came across this quote recently by Egon Schiele, and I just thought um, it applied here. Uh, he said, I must see new things and investigate them. I want to taste dark water and see crackle crackling trees and wild winds. I thought that was beautiful. So now we're down under, and this is the shadow of two branches, two trees above the lake. You can actually see a ripple in the water and a fish. There's no enhancement of color here. And so we have the X entering my work again. So back home to the ocean here on the East End, I like to shoot the day after hurricanes when um, the surf is still extremely powerful but the rain has stopped. And this whole series is called The Break. And these two, are, they're sort of the moment between moments because it's what we, we really can't see with our eyes because the water's just moving too fast. And going back to my film days, I just loved anamorphic film, which is that very cinemascope, that very wide, it's 2.39 to 1 ratio, as opposed to the 16 to 9 we're accustomed to. Um, and when I cropped these images, I just, you know, sort of did it instinctually, pull out the cropping tool, and they, they always came just within a, very close to that, that anamorphic ratio. And I think it gives the viewer, I don't know, it sort of envelops them in a way that allows you to kind of roam over the image. So these are all shot probably at Indian Wells Beach. Love this kind of wall of water and the sensuality of nature. So the sea, which is ever changing but constant, I sort of, you know, I wanted to create these sort of all-consuming primordial images of so power and sensuality. As uh, we say in French, la mer, it's female. Coming back to the exhibition here in the church, um, it was even more it was different, but even more daunting to shoot in Iceland. And to me, those were the places you were allowed to walk without falling in quicksand or something. So yeah, I was trekking to various locations and freezing elements. And I call this series 
earth rising, because they're very much about the atmosphere rising from the earth and descending from above at the same time. And the next three are in the exhibition. And uh, when I printed that large for the exhibition and it just felt evocative of our time during COVID. Just sort of the isolation, the little outcropping of rock in that vast expanse. This was also shot in Iceland, the one over, over there light coming through the clouds. And actually there were some people in here earlier who thought that was a painting. I always love that. It confused the mediums. And the one in the middle over here called Isle of Sky, and that was shot in Byron Bay, Australia. Byron Bay is the easternmost point of Australia. It's got a lighthouse just like Montauk. This was shooting straight towards Antarctica. And it's, it's always interesting because we see the immater immateriality of the atmosphere and then we put that um, di in digital form and then I print it on a printer and the whole idea is to create a state of immateriality or <laughs> metaphysicality or, or mystery in, in, the, in the viewer. So it's sort of coming full circle. Something perhaps transcendent. This is on the island of Tasmania. I like that one of that tree. This is called Solo Walk and speaks to my life, sort of a journey into the unknown. Just when you thought it was over. <laughs> We're back to one of my other lives. <laughs> So these are paintings that were made out here. The vortex or tornado has been a recurring theme. I call this series force majeure, which means a greater force in a sense, like tornadoes or hurricanes or pandemics. Or... It feels like what I do in the studio, sort of funneling energy. I don't really feel responsible for my paintings. Um, it's just sort of, I feel like it's coming through me or I'm being directed by something. What's funny is I can walk into an exhibition of mine and kind of look around and say, oh, this is interesting. Because <laughs> I, really I really don't feel that they're mine. So these all are called force measure. So these paintings are more abstract. These ones coming up were inspired by Maidstone Park, the surrounding bay and springs. And of course, it's not a, a direct inspiration. It's more of a feeling state. I call them the asking place. There's in a moment of despair, I had my first conversation with God or the goddess in that place. If anyone sees a resemblance, you can tell me. <laughs> so we just decided to include a few of my paintings because of the difficulty of, of seeing them uh, on the screen. And you're welcome to take a look at them afterwards. So I, I think painting, painting is an act of faith. So I said, you know, it feels like something, something coming through me, um, not something from my conscious mind. It's a very organic process, and I have a hard time creating series because I don't really know how I got there. You know, I put on layers, I take them off, I scrape them, I sand them, and add them, and. And this one is also here in the uh, old spring fever. I tried hopelessly to make a series on this one, but it just never works. It, it becomes too intentional and 
somehow my mind is the biggest enemy in the studio. This is called Artifact, it's a 40, 54 by 48. And you can see some big O's in there. There again. We're getting close. <laughs> and of course, that's the painting here. This is called Days of Light and Darkness, 60 by 50. The first COVID winter, and I think it was just a, felt like I was going endlessly inward. I don't know if I'll ever make paintings like this again. It's a detail. I love iridescent paints, which I've used for a couple of decades. This one's a little lighter. Another detail. And then finally, just a few small paintings. Um, this is called Getting Quiet Inside. Things eventually seem to get a little simpler, and I think I needed the horizon line to be a calming force. Small painting called Day for Night. This one's called Getting Fiery Inside. I feel art's a way to process one's life. I do want to create beauty. Sally Gull last Saturday told us about Eric's comment on her, on her work. He said, they're beautiful, is, is beauty a word anymore? And I hope it is. I think art can reflect life, or it can be a counterpoint to it. So I hope these works leave a lasting improve on the viewer. And because one can never end without love. Um, for the last seven or eight years, I've been uh, working on a seven episode docu-series. Uh, I interviewed 150 people, many of them local, and asked them about love. So um, the first episode played at, uh, it was the, the last night of the Hamptons Dock Fest, right before, about three, three months before the lockdown. So I'm working on trying to get that to a streaming platform, and I thought I'd just show you a few minutes. And 
Bruce will be performing here tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it, folks. <laughs> <laughs>